What's up guys, today we're going to take a look at all the Warlock skills, each of the variations, what they look like, and what each of them do. Pretty excited to bring you guys this class today, so let's jump right into it. Now, before we begin, I do need to note, I am on the Taiwan server, as you can see. Uh, I do have the English patch installed, though, so I can uh, read the skills and such like that. Um, this is the pre-nerfed Warlock. On NA, we will have the nerfed version. So I will go over a couple of the differences in skills uh, on this server, and I'll, I'll go over the ones that we will have on the NA server. Uh, the skill names on this English patch, is, they're also different than the ones on BNS Tree. Uh, so down below, I will uh, include uh, the button that it's default bound to and both names to hopefully avoid any confusion. Uh, these patch notes uh, names on this English patch were used on the English stream for the World Finals tournament. So I'll try to refer to these because uh, they're probably the ones that are going to be used. But just in case, like I said, I'll have both names down below. Now, before we get into the skills of the Warlock, there are two mechanics that we need to go over. And that's Brand and Mark. Now, both of them can be applied in a couple different ways. And both of them give uh, additional effect. So the first one is brand. You can apply it with like Solsa Shackle or Tether Blade, and its additional effect is that it'll uh, add additional damage to a couple skills. If you tear them up, they'll do additional damage to branded targets. But the biggest thing that it includes is that it activates Leech. We can't use the Leech unless the target is branded. I will go over this in a little bit, but it's one thing to note. The next mechanic that we'll go over is Mark. Mark is applied through Rupture. Uh, you can tear up your pet's auto attack to apply it, and Dragon Call. Uh, its additional effect is that it makes our right click bombardment instant cast. Uh, both of these mechanics have an effect uh, that applies uh, above the enemy's head. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, let me just put a couple points in the skill real quick so we can see it. So, first, we'll take a look at Brand. We put Bound and Feel on the target we see a triangle above their head. That means target is branded. So we'll use our dragon call real quick. Now we've marked the target and makes our right click instant cast. You can see it's a circle. So now that we've gone over those couple mechanics, let's go over the skills. So first attack we have incantation. Very simple auto attack chain. Uh, it has a two part chain with a third ability called Mantra that has a cooldown. So basically while Mantra is on cooldown you'll alternate with the two uh, auto attack chains on the left click and when Mantra is off cooldown you'll throw Mantra. Mantra gives an instant three focus recovery, uh, gives a five additional five focus recovery over time. Uh, you could tear it up down the left to give more focus recovery or on the right uh, to give extra HP regen. Uh, so we'll take a look at those attacks real quick. So we have our one two, and then Mantra. And now while Mantra's on cooldown, we'll just alternate back and forth between our normal two auto attack chain, and as Mantra comes back up, it'll just get replaced in the chain. Pretty standard uh, attack chain. So moving on, right click, bombardment. This is one of our core abilities, uh, cost three focus, the uh, range is 16 meters, a single target ability at base, 0.7 second cast time, no cooldown. Now it does have a cast time, but you can use this skill while moving. Uh, so we can tear it up a couple different ways as well. Down the left side, you can see we can give it uh, some extra damage uh, on instant cast, and it becomes instant cast on knockdown, airborne, dazed, or stunned enemies. Uh, we can take it over here to be in AoE ability that also gives 10% uh, health returned uh, as lifesteal. And on the far right, we actually have <laughs> quite a extensive skill. Uh, I'll have to show it rather than explain it, but it's Dimensional Volley, and it gives us the use of Dimensional Charge and Dimensional Salvo. So let's take a look at it normally first. So as you can see, we can use it while moving. It's a pretty normal attack. If we tear it over uh, to this side real quick, we'll see that it turns into an AoE. You can still use it while moving, but it's an AoE that gives... Uh, uh, life steal back as well, and now dimensional volley. So this one's a little trickier. See, it's now red, so we can right click. And if you watch, we see a purple and then a blue. Now the way this works is when we right click once and then right click immediately, one, two, we fire the red then the purple one. 
Alternatively, you could fire the red one, wait a second, and now you can activate the blue one. So, you'll have to go through these individually to check this out. There's tons of effects for each of them and different rotations for them. Uh, this, I believe this is more of a PvE skill. I don't really use too much in PvP. The other ones are much, much better for PvP. So, let's move on to our F skills. Uh, first, we have Repulse. Now, before we talk about this one, we're going to have to talk about our one skill, Quell, or uh, usually known as block. This is very, very similar to the uh, Blade Master's block skill. Uh, channels for 1.5 seconds, has a one second cooldown, so you can, you know, you, it's never on cooldown uh, if you do a full channel, uh, but you will have to wait a second. You know, you can't just spam block and move, block and move. You have to stand still, just like Blade Master. It's a focus recovery on block, uh, and when you block, you ready repulse. Now, We'll take a look at the rest of these real quick. You know, you put one point in, you can increase the duration you block for, uh, you can get uh, HP recovery, uh, and we have an entire tier down here that changes our repulse. So let's look at the base repulse first. Uh, you can only use this after a successful block, okay? Uh, nine second cooldown decreases movement speed of the enemy and pushes them away 10 meters. Three focus recovery. Pretty st uh, straightforward. I can't really show this one because I need to get hit first to use it, but we can upgrade uh, each tier down here. So this one basically makes it so that we can use it while blocking. We don't need to get hit to activate it. And it pushes 10 meters away, just like the other one. It's a 36 second cooldown because it does a lot more damage. And it pushes back basically four times really quickly. Uh, this one also gives a uh, focus recovery still. Uh, if you look at all of them, they do all give three focus recovery. This one, uh, and these two over here both are the same as the base repulse where you will have to get hit while blocking first before you can use them um, You can see that this one knocks down for three seconds uh, We go over here. This actually changes up the block to a si oops, sorry six second cooldown uh, But it parries multiple attacks for two seconds after casting uh, Otherwise, it's uh, very similar, but it does have that six second cooldown. So it really it's a lot tougher to use this one uh, but we do have um uh, a very similar repulse to the base repulse, except uh, it reduces the cooldown of our Bastion by three seconds when we get hit. Uh, we'll go over Bastion a little bit later, uh, but this one over here is probably the most interesting one. It uh, On hit, we can knock up enemies on an 18 second cooldown. Now this says it's on stunned enemies, but actually on the NA patch, the stunned requirement has been removed. And as long as you block, you're able to just instantly knock up an enemy. So uh, let's take a look at, uh, we can actually look at this one real quick because we can use it while uh, casting. So as you can see, this is our normal block. It's a frontal block. We can hold it. Uh, we cannot use it while moving, but we can use Repulse. So we'll fire forward a little bit. So moving on, let's go back to the F skills. Moving on to Rupture. Uh, Rupture is a uh, it's an interesting skill. It uh, base has a little bit of focus recovery. It's got a cooldown. Does okay damage. Uh, it marks the target for 0.8 seconds. Uh, a little bit of AOE range. Instant cast. Um, you can tear it up down the left to give some more focus recovery back. Decrease cooldown and create one spectral orb. Uh, we will go over spectral orbs a little bit later. It has to do with our four ability, but we'll hold off on that for now. Uh, we can also go down the right hand side to make it a focus spender. Uh, removes the cooldown and increases the damage. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm going to put a couple points in a different skill real quick just so I can uh, show you guys what Rupture looks like. I'm going to use a different skill first. Uh, this is not Rupture. We're just going to proc Rupture. We'll let this skill finish so I can show you what Rupture looks like. Alright, here's Rupture. So that's a little AoE. Got a couple effects. Uh, it's really used to just uh, uh, supplement your DPS, I suppose, while you're doing other things. Uh, it's pretty handy like that. Uh, next is uh, Awakened Rupture. I will actually talk about this a little bit later. Uh, Warlock is the class that enables Awakened skills. So I will talk about that um, when we get to that skill. Uh, our Retreat, uh, your roll, your Tech, uh, whatever you want to call it, very standard, similar to other classes. Uh, but it is like the Summoner's roll, where it will move you back 10 meters uh, instead of a normal roll. And it does have a little bit of its own animation. Uh, the roll, the uh, CC break, and the backstep all have uh, sort of teleport animations, which are they look pretty cool, but they you know they have a chance to kind of confuse your opponent a little in PvP, so that might come in handy. Now we'll move on to one of our biggest 
skills. That's leech. So take a look at this. What does this do? Well, it gives an instant 10 focus recovery, three spectral orbs on hit, which I told you we'll talk about later. Uh, enables siphon, which you can see up here, siphon for 12 seconds. And after hitting with it, it resets cooldown of Dragon Call on our four and Wingstorm on our V. We're unable to reset the cooldown. Another one of the things we'll go over later. It's got a 45 second cooldown. It's got a bit of a cast time. Uh, you don't really notice it. It's more of the animation, but you can use it while moving. Uh, but siphon, let's go over this real quick since it doesn't quite say what it is. So what does siphon do? Siphon will enable our four Dragon Call and our V Wingstorm to be instant cast spells. Sometimes you'll see that, uh, we'll take a look, they're normally purplish colored, um, as you can see, but sometimes they'll turn blue, and they'll be blue while you're siphoned, meaning they are instant cast spells, and they have no cast time the entire time you are siphoned. Now, it also resets the cooldown of both of these spells. What this means is, uh, it, they could be, uh, you know, on cooldown at any point. As soon as you cast this, it'll reset both cooldowns and they'll be instant cast. Uh, we can tear this up a little bit down. Uh, we'll take a look at the first two. Um, it uh, allows us to uh, paralyze the target, which is really interesting. It's not actually a CC, but it is at the same time. It's very similar to the Assassin's Body Swap, uh, where you're, you're sort of stunned, but you're not actually stunned. You can't trinket out of it, but you can't do anything from it. Uh, very, very similar to that. Um, right here, uh, left side, we get a crit damage buff while we are siphoned. Uh, in the middle, we get a 10% uh, heal. It's actually 5% on NA, so it's a little less, but it will cancel defensive skills and render defensive skills useless if canceling a skill. And on the right side, uh, it'll turn into a stun for 3 seconds, but on NA, this siphon duration will go down to 4 seconds rather than 12, so keep that in mind. So let's actually take a look at uh, what Leech looks like real quick. I'm going to have to brand uh, the target first. I'm going to use Bound and Field of Brand. Now I'm going to use Leech. Pretty cool effect. So you can see over here we've created three Spectral Orbs instantly, and we've become siphoned. Alright, uh, we actually have our pet, our tab. I'm going to save that for later because there's quite a few pet skills to go over, so I'm going to group all those up. Uh, moving on to our one, we have Displace, uh, very straightforward uh, stand-up from your knockdown, just like all the other classes. Uh, works the same way, um, you know, resist uh, knockdown groggy, which is just daze, uh, stun and knockback for one second. If you manage to stand up, you can be knocked down while you're standing up. Uh, reversal, a grab counter. If you do it at the right time, you'll counter grab, you'll get out of grab. So, moving on to our two, Soul Shackle. This is an AoE root or snare. Uh, it gives it a little bit of focus recovery, uh, 24 second cooldown. It's a slow, stacks one bleed baseline. So if we go down the left hand side, well, it, we're able to turn it into an AoE field. It's a bigger radius, and it actually leaves a circle on the ground that continuously snares, applies the bleed, the brand, and the slow every second that someone is inside of it. It uh, also pierces defense, um, but this, this is actually pretty nice. It absorbs 50% of the damage that it deals as well. If we go down this tier, this actually turns it into a knock up on, uh, knock down is no longer on the NA client, but a stunned or dazed enemy. You'll able, be able to launch them in the air. And on the right side, we actually get our defense cancel skill uh, and renders defensive skills useless on canceling a defense. So let's take a look at uh, what Bounded Field looks like. We've seen this a couple times. Just throw it out, and it binds them up. Pretty straightforward. On R2, we have Second Wind, very standard uh, CC break. It's just like the Summoners and Assassins break. Uh, first tier adds in knockdown, stun, days, unconscious. Second tier is grab, and third tier is your heal on grab break. So, moving on to R3, we have Imprison. Uh, now this skill is, it says instant cast, but it's actually a channel skill that you have to stand still to use. On every hit it will stack a bleed, so you can stack it up to five times. You can see it's five uses, it'll tick five times while you stand still. And on successfully finishing uh, the attack, next Dragon Call or Wingstorm cast instantly. So that's our four and our V. 
Now you can only pick one of those. They'll both become instant cast, but you can only use the effect of one of them. The other one will go back to being a cast time. Like I said, you do have to stand still for it, but you can see if we tear it up, it'll start to give us quite a bit of things. Uh, each target hit recovers focus. On hitting a branded enemy, deals additional damage. Uh, pretty basic combo is just throwing down your soul shackle, which automatically brands the enemy, and then imprisoning, you know, so they're rooted in it and they get hit for the entire duration. Uh, you can see the next tier, we increase the damage over time. Uh, upon a consecutive successful hit, you get a crit bonus. On imp on a imprisoned critical hit, we generate three spectral orbs. And like I said, we'll go over those uh, shortly. That's with Dragon Call. And last tier, upon successful finishing attack, so that's the last attack in the chain, the fifth attack, it will reset the cooldown of Dragon Call and Wingstorm. Don't forget, we're also making both of those instant casts in the last hit as well. Uh, they, they're both able to be instant cast, but you can only pick one. But if they are on cooldown, you'll reset the cooldown of both of them. Uh, there is a second tree added uh, on NA. Uh, basically, all it adds in is a daze on the first attack. You lose a lot of the stuff, but um, it gets a damage increase as well, but it adds a daze on the second attack. So let's take a look and see what a prison looks like. Like I said, uh, can't use it while moving. You can see our V and our 4 both changed to blue because they were instant cast. Uh, the other one, our 3, uh, Thrash, just a normal uh, attack grabbed, just like uh, you know, most other classes. But we also have this thing, Void Walk. It's uh, basically a second CC break. It allows us to escape from knockdown, stun, and daze. But we cannot use this unless our pet is out, or uh, sometimes it's called a thrall pet summon. Um, but you, if your pet is not out, you cannot use this ability. You see that it does have a 1 minute 30 second cooldown and a 50 meter range, which is pretty far. Um, but it is only knockdown stunner days, you know. So there's, you know, there are other CCs that you can't get out of, but these are the, you know, the most common ones. So that is pretty handy. So let's move on to one of our core uh, abilities you've probably seen before, Dragon Call. So this skill. Uh, you can see that we reduce the focus cost down to one with one point. Um, it has a 2.5 second cast time. Uh, it, you cannot move while casting this one. It has a cooldown of 18 seconds, 5 meter AoE range, 16 meter shot, and consumes all spectral orbs on use. So finally, let's talk, what are these spectral orbs I keep hearing about? All right, so for Dragon Call, upon hit decrease, Dragon Call cooldown to one second per spectral orb. Pretty straightforward but what what are the spectral orbs so spectral orbs you've seen we've got a couple ways to gain them you can only hold up to three at a time you cannot have more than three on you at a time you can have one two or three and there are ways to generate one two or three orbs at a time but you cannot hold more than three if you gain any more after that it'll simply refresh the duration of all three so uh, the most you can decrease cooldown by of dragon call is three seconds uh, so we'll take a look what else we got over here. Uh, it does mark the target. We can extend the mark duration to four seconds, as you can see. <clears throat> uh, gives us a critical hit chance on hit. And over here, this one significantly increases the damage. Increases damage on airborne enemies. Uh, reduces the AoE range, but increases the cooldown by quite a bit. Uh, so let's actually let's take a look at uh, Dragon Call and see what that looks like. I'm actually going to back up a little bit. It's a pretty cool animation, so you can see the whole thing. pretty cool right so I wanted to talk about this one first because when we go to the right side we actually completely change the skill and it becomes dragon helix so this is the other uh, skill that works with spectral orbs so we need three spectral orbs to be able to use a skill you cannot use this skill unless you have three spectral orbs you have to have three to use this and it will consume all of them on use what this does is uh, we see that it'll mark the target for three seconds and it'll brand if we tear it up. <clears throat> There's no cooldown. The small AoE, 16 meter range. So we need three orbs to use it and it'll use all the orbs at once. Uh, I'm going to put a couple points in here real quick so we can see it. I'm going to use uh, Wingstorm first just to stack up orbs. We'll talk about Wingstorm shortly, but I want to show you guys what Dragon Helix looks like. Okay, so we see that we have three spectral orbs now. So we're going to see, this is what Dragon Helix is. 
Pretty cool, right? So, like I said, it removes all spectral orbs that you have, and it requires three to be used at a time. All right, what do we got next? This is Z Bastion. This is very similar to the Blade Dancer's Z. Uh, untiered, it uh, resists one use uh, damage uh, for five seconds. We can see if we tear it up, it'll go to five resists. And this tier, this is actually different. This is not the same on NA. On NA, what this one does, uh, it will instantly restore 5% HP. You do not have to resist. And it will instantly restore 10 focus. It won't be on resist. So that's pretty handy. Uh, you see, we go over to the right hand side. It'll change to a shield for 20% of your HP for 10 seconds. Uh, and it'll give you 5% HP instantly. This is what uh, the left side will do as well along with 10 uh, focus recovery. Uh, and when using Bastion, resist airborne. Uh, so a couple things like that. So let's take a look, see what that looks like. So as you can see, if I put myself in combat, you normally have a couple uh, charms floating around you. When we activate Bastion, we had a couple different colored ones for five seconds, and they disappear. All right, Tetherblade RX. So. This is the easiest way, I suppose, for a warlock to CC someone. Uh, we have a couple other ways to CC, but this will be your kind of bread and butter CC setup stuff. Uh, baseline, it's two focus cost, 18 second cooldown. It's a knockdown for two seconds. We tear it up to add in a brand for four seconds, pierce parry, and we can make it either a three second knockdown with a movement speed decrease, a three second daze, or a two second stun, but the cooldown does increase for the stun uh, over the other two. So let's take a look at what Tether Blade looks like. Okay, pretty pretty standard, pretty simple. All right, RC, Sanctum. Uh, this is a two focus cost. Uh, it's kind of useless without any skill points into it, but it actually becomes really nice with skill points into it. Uh, 45 second cooldown. Resist knockdown for six seconds, sounds kind of meh. So what happens when we put points into it? First point, uh, all the tiers will get a 20% damage decrease while you're standing in the circle for six seconds. It's pretty handy. Uh, down the left side, you can see we reduce the cooldown to 36 seconds and we get a 9% HP recovery for six seconds. Pretty nice. Uh, middle tree, we have uh, the resist knockdown stays and the damage decrease stays. Uh, but this now adds in resist knockdown and days. And then the third one adds in stun. So we resist knockdown, daze, and stun while inside the circle. And the final tree is actually the most interesting one. Uh, the wording's kind of odd, but basically what it's saying is that you cannot be targeted by enemies while you're standing in the circle. Uh, you can be hit by AoE attacks, but you cannot be directly targeted by abilities. Uh, this cooldown goes up for this one as well. Um, so let's take a look and see what that looks like. As you can see, the middle tier has a much bigger circle that you get to work with. Uh, as long as you're in the circle, you gain the effect. Alright, RV. You know, you've seen this one a couple times. This is uh, our, our kind of third, fourth uh, bread and butter skill, basically. Wingstorm. Uh, now, NA, we will have a third tier over here. This is a skill probably has gotten the biggest hit to it, I suppose, after the nerf. Um, so let's let's take a look at it and see what's up. Uh, it's a two focus cost, does pretty good amount of damage over three uses, uh, and on each hit, this should be on each hit creates three spectral orbs. So basically, what this does is it fires for at 16 meters, it's pretty far range. Uh, after a one second cast, you have to stand still to cast the first time, but when you cast it, it'll fire forward, and then about. Mm, a second, second and a half later, not quite sure on the time, it'll fire forward again a second time, and then a third time a second, and a sec about a second and a half later after that one. You do not have to control the second two hits. They will fire forward automatically without you having to do anything. Every single one of those hits will create three spectral orbs. So it's a total of nine, but remember, like I said, you can only hold three at a time. You know, So you'll have to spend them as they get created. So you can see we can put a couple points into it. On hit with Wingstorm, we're able to ready Mantra and Rupture, so we can use them both. Uh, this one will do additional damage to branded targets, and we can mark the target uh, for a couple seconds uh, on that one. Uh, this one, this is the biggest change right here. 
So as you see, the damage is increased. That'll still be there, but we have absorbs 25% of damage as HP. So this means 25% of the damage this skill will do. Uh, you would get back HP, and then branded enemies, when you hit them, you absorb 25% of the damage as well. Now, that is changed on NA. Basically, now the way it works is it's the exact same uh, effect, I suppose, except it will only absorb damage from crits. So it still absorbs 25% of damage from crits as HP, and this one is branded enemies. You'll absorb 25% uh, damage at, from crits. So they both have to be crits. Two of the same, the two of the same effects. They just have to be crits to get the life steal back. You won't get the base life steal back anymore. So, like I said, there's a third tree over here now. Basically, it's taken Pierce Defense. This is gone from this skill. Uh, the skill tree. Deep Wound is gone from this skill tree, and the absorbs 25% damage is gone from this skill tree, and it's put in the third tree. But the damage is significantly lower on this third tree than this one. So it's going to be quite a toss up to figure out which one you want to use. So let's take a look at that one real quick. So as you can see, they cast uh, once after the initial cast, you can't move while casting, and then there's two more casts after that, that you can, or will be cast while you're moving. Uh, before we move on to the pet abilities, take a look at one last skill, that is Eclipse, which is our back step. Uh, it's similar to the Summoners, moves you back 10 meters, escapes from freeze, resist damage status effects, pretty normal. But we can have uh, quite a few tier ups here on resist, resets cooldown of Dragon Call R4 and Wingstorm RV, pretty nice. We can recover uh, HP, and uh, after use, resist damage and status effects for one full second. So that's pretty handy. Uh, down the right side, we can also get a snare for four seconds and brand the target for four seconds. Uh, it looks uh, pretty cool, actually, if you watch. A little bit of a teleport. Uh, you can see they had a little bit of a snare uh, circle that also brand the enemies around you, uh, around you, around you. So let's move on to what everyone I'm sure is looking forward to. The pet. So sometimes it's called uh, summon thrall, just summon pet. Uh, you know, it's got a few different names, uh, but you'll you'll know it when you see it. Uh, we've got a few different ways tiered up. It's kind of similar to the summoner's pet a little bit. Uh, it's a offensive tree on the left and a defensive tree on the right. Uh, you can get you know more health to the defensive tree, more damage to the offensive tree. Uh, it has a 45 second cooldown. And if you tear it up to either of these sides here, uh, you'll increase the duration. The flat, the the default duration is 24 seconds, but putting at least two points in either side will increase the duration of the summon to 32 seconds. But it will still have a 45 second cooldown. It is a short cast time. You cannot use it while moving. So let's go ahead and take a look at him. Pretty cool pet, right? You can see he's got a ranged auto attack. And we can either send him in with our Q or call him back with our E. He has a melee attack as well. So let's take a look at our Q and our E that we just used. Q is our onrush, which is the one where he jumped in. You can spec it up to taunt or you can spec it to knock back followed by a knockdown and brand for four seconds or you can turn it into a stun for two seconds but a much longer cooldown this you can use while moving and while under some cc uh our e is fall in now this one will call the pet to us but we have to be standing still to call him to us there isn't a cast time but you cannot use it while moving it does have a 50 meter range but it's pretty far it actually does a good little bit of damage as well but it's only on a six second cooldown so you can feel free to call him uh, as much as you want but like i said it, you do have to be standing still to activate it so let's take a look at some of uh its passives so we looked at this one what else does he have you probably saw this this was a gravity well uh, when you saw me send him in, he casts this automatically on his own, where he'll automatically pull enemies in. We could tear it up to pull in five times, uh, decrease their move speed, and disable movement skills. You also have two buff fields over here. Circle of Wrath, which will give uh, party members a an, an, uh, stacking attack buff, or Hollowed Ground, which will be a focus recovery field. So let's take a look at one of these. Let's take a look at Circle of Wrath. So we summon the pet. 
you'll see that he automatically casts it. We can send him in, and the fuel will stay there. We can also call him back. So hollow ground is the same, uh, same concept. Uh, it's a blue field, but it gives uh, focus recovery instead. You can see uh, over here on the right, we do have the summon time. Uh, you can underneath the health bar, you can see the duration of the summon. Uh, you can see that he does have uh, almost about 40,000 health with uh, the, de the defensive tree. Now, on to the biggest one. This is the ability that our pet gains uh, over the tab button while we have it summoned. So, first one, obliterate. We can tear it up to see that uh, it's a self-destruct. Uh, it deals quite a bit of damage, additional damage on airborne enemies. Uh, on uh, when you activate it, it will trigger after th a 3.7 gas time, so it is pretty long. But this is your pet will be casting this. They'll be standing still. Uh, it'll be destroyed no matter what time is remaining on it. Uh, it'll gain increased defense while it's channeling. It will pull enemies three times. On the first pull, it will stun for three seconds. It'll be a pretty big movement speed decrease, pierces defense, and your summon cooldown will be decreased by six seconds. So it's a 24 second uh, cooldown for obliterate. Your summon cooldown will get reduced by six out of 39. Uh, so yeah, got a five meter radius. Let's take a look and see what obliterate looks like. So we'll move on in, summon our pet, and now we'll use obliterate. Pretty standard uh, AOE self-destruct kind of thing. Uh, let's go ahead and take these points out so you don't get uh, confused about that. That was just the normal uh, circle that we saw before. Now, moving on to two of the, <laughs> I guess, coolest abilities, the most iconic warlock abilities that you've probably seen before. Let's take a look at the first one. Soul Burn, also known as Spiritualize. This is the ability that gives you access to Awakened skills. Now, not only you get access to awakened skills, all party members that gain this buff gain access to awakened skills. You can see it's a 30 meter cast range, it's a two second cast for the pet, a three minute cooldown, but what do we get? Soul burn. Awakened skills are available, soul burn resets cooldown for all your skills, generates 10 focus, during soul burn increases crit damage by 50%, and movement speed by 20%. And once again, our Thrall is consumed regardless of the remaining time, meaning he will die after use. So, let's take a look at that one. We'll summon our pet. Activate Soul Burn. And we get a pretty cool buff. You can see we've got the Soul Burn buff. And on top of that, get a nice little outfit, get some wings, Pretty cool skill, right? Now, on to the final skill. Time Distortion. This is probably the coolest skill in the Warlock arsenal. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it before if you've watched any sort of Warlock PvP. It creates this giant clock on the ground around the pet, and all of a sudden the Warlock just starts destroying everything in front of him. It's absolutely amazing. It's probably the biggest draw that I had in the class. So let's take a look at it. It resets all cooldowns up to three times over five seconds. You can see it's a five meter AOE range. Pretty hard to miss that one. Uh, three minute cooldown. That's pretty pretty straightforward. It sounds pretty uh, pretty simple, right? Uh, but you do see this says unable to reset cooldown for this skill. If you ever see this on any other skill, this is the skill it's referring to. Is that this skill will not reset its cooldown? Uh, we have that on Leech. We cannot reset the cooldown on Leech. Um, but most of our other skills can have their cooldowns reset. Actually makes some pretty cool combos. Uh, I'll show you here. The easiest thing to do is uh, if you use the leech and then it makes your four dragon call and your V wingstorm instant cast. And then with time warp up, uh, time distortion, we will ab we're able to instant cast constantly our V and our four. So let's take a look at that. We'll go ahead and get our pet out. We'll brand the target with our two. We'll use leech. And we'll activate time distortion. 
As you can see, it's pretty mana intensive as well. Absolutely amazing. Love this skill. So cool. I don't know how you can't, how you can't like it. It's awesome. Uh, it does reset, uh, like I said, your 4 and your V. It also resets your 3, your 2, your Z, and your X. So during this time, uh, you can... Uh, there's only a couple skills that I've seen that share GCDs, like uh, your 4 and a V will be shared, and like your 2, your X, and your Z will be shared. You don't really want to cast your 3 during it, because it's a channel. So ideally, you're wanting to spam, you're want, you know, you'd like to spam a lot of these skills during it. Uh, I'll, I'll actually go over in another video the uh, optimal rotation and stuff through time distortion. Um, but this, this video is... Uh, uh, basically, I just want to go over each of the skills. Anyone new to the class, you know, you're interested in checking it out, it turned into a pretty long video, actually. Um, but, like I said, I just want to kind of show off the skills. I know a lot of people are hyped about Warlock. It's an awesome class. You know, you're ready to get into it. Um, but, yeah, I take a look at them. We'll go over the skills. you have any questions about the skills, if I forgot something, um, you know, if something didn't make sense, anything like that, please, please, please leave a comment below the video. Let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm on the Taiwan server. I hit level 50. I'm looking forward to PvPing as much as I can on this class because I'm looking to main it when it comes to NA. Uh, so, you know, if you got any other questions that you want me to test out, check out some stuff for you. I'd be more than happy to. Uh, I will be, uh, I have other videos about uh, combos, rotations, PvP builds, stuff like that. Make sure you check those out. Um, like I said, I am playing it, so if you want to come watch, uh, I'm over on Twitch TV. Uh, I am Karth underscore WS. So if you want to watch me PvP some, ask my you know ask questions there while I'm playing. I can test something for you live. Anything like that. Uh, like I said, if, otherwise leave them below the video. I'll answer as many as I can, test out whatever I can. So yeah, that uh, you know that's the Warlock skills. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you don't have any questions or anything like that, until next time, I'll see you guys later.